Good morning, it's Jane and Mike from Earth Care Farm. Um, today is July 20th and we're going to talk about um, pests and weeds today. We've had a lot of requests for this information. I've been kind of putting it off because it gets a little complicated, <laughs> but it's also pretty simple at the same time. Um, so we're here in our field, usually we're in the home garden, but we have tomatoes here. Many of you, most of you I assume, have a tomato or two in your garden. And this is when you start seeing the tomato hornworm, which is a hungry little critter that really enjoys tomato plants. Um, I have one here that I wanted to show you. This is a bigger one. It looks like that. It's hard to see because it's... It blends right it in. It really blends in. And I've gotten a, like a second sense for finding them, and I'll show you how I do that. I look here. This is their frass, otherwise known as poo. And usually I see those. They look like little grenades. And then I look up from there, and there's a little guy right there. That's a tomato hornworm. So, and they are small right now. They can get very big. We, we've gotten them up to nine inches. Right now this guy's really tiny. He's a, you know, an inch. But um, our pest control methods are pretty hands-off. We, um, for these guys, I'm just going to be monitoring them. If they are really doing a lot of damage, I'll start to pick them off. But we are blessed with a lot of abundance of tomatoes, so a little bit of nibbling here and there. The plants are designed for that. They can they can handle a little bit. This is this is fine. That's acceptable. Like um, Jane said, pest control is complicated. Um, it's much better to it's humbling, but it's empowering at the same time to realize nature is smarter than we are. <laughs> so rather than running to some kind of pesticide, it's best to have patience and let the parasites and predators come. So our way of doing that is just to build habitat for those, those parasites and predators. And um, one of the best ways of a natural control for these tomato hornworms is the parasitic wasp. Um, and so what the parasitic wasp likes is, you know, access to food like the caterpillars. And they also enjoy some of the flowers that we have, particularly anything in the umble family, which looks, I don't know, like I think of an umbrella. Um, so we'll show you alongside these tomatoes, we've planted a lot of flowers and I'll show you the activity on those. Um, while we're standing here, I'll just mention, we're doing some popcorn trials of, um, from the Indigenous Seed Project. These are um, popcorn native to Rhode Island and I'm really excited. If you're interested to find out more, you should definitely check out the Indigenous Seed Project. Chris Hubbard, um, awesome Iroquois farmer, uh, provided these seeds for me and I'm really excited to to get some native plants back in this area, garden plants. Yeah, the heirlooms are the best. Mm -hmm. So let's look at some of these flowers that we have here. And the also side benefit is they're beautiful and they attract just more insects that you're gonna want. You, it sounds counterintuitive, but the more insects, the more diversity of that, the actually better off you're gonna be. It's also gonna attract more birds. Um, and that's just, why it's good to have multiple types of plants in your garden rather than a monoculture because it's much more difficult when you have a monoculture. You'll see here we have flowers alongside eggplants, tomatoes, cucumbers, marigolds, popcorn. Boy, the it's, eggplants are looking good. They are. And you'll see, I'm not too worried. They've got holes. You know, they've got a little bit of this damage. I, I'm really not that worried. These plants are designed to, to handle that. Um, I have harvested a few eggplants, but these zinnias are just gorgeous. So these are, those are these. I, I did want to show you the humble family uh, flowers. These peppers are looking great. I've actually been harvesting a few of these. These are a little small today. But. So this is humble family. You can see already, look at we've got um, a ladybug here. Whoops. Can you see that, Cooper? That ladybug? Those are amazing aphid eaters. They'll just come in here and, and do some awesome aphid control. And uh, here's some Queen Anne's lace. This is um, a favorite of, I've seen the parasitic wasps on these a lot. Um, so yeah, just encourage the diversity in your garden. We get into trouble when we plant just one thing in a field. And it's great that Jane's generation and Cooper's generation are learning this, realizing it. Because in my generation, it was better living through chemistry and we had nasty, nasty insecticides. We started with DDT and then went to Chlordane and Temic and all types of things that were very, very bad 
for the health of the earth. Um, so your generation is doing much better. Uh, we learn by our mistakes sometimes, and that's not necessarily bad. It's just a way to learn. <laughs> yeah, and we're learning that just diversity of life in your soil. I just took this mushroom out of our soil beds. That's amazing. This is just going to feed more diversity of the larger insects. Then it supports your plant roots and uh, your plant roots are going to get stronger, have healthier plants. There's very little inputs needed in this field. Um, the main so job of farming and gardening is to create healthy soil. That's mm -hmm. your main job. If you do that, the soil will take care of the rest. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you'll have minor problems with different little imbalances, but it kind of balances out in the long run mm. if you just take care of your soil. Um, the, the thing I want to talk about too, there's a wonderful book called Bringing Nature Home by Doug Tallamy, and um, he just talks about the vast quantity of insects that birds need to consume. And I love um, the research he did that one little nest of chickadees, which is about three eggs, um, it takes those mama bird, the mama bird, 9,000 caterpillars or insects to raise that little hatch of chickadees. So if we just have that in mind, you need to have a lot, a lot of insects around to support just one nest of birds. So let, let nature, you know, do your pest control for you. But it will, if, we, if we encounter something really getting out of balance, we'll show you how we, how we kind of take control of that. Um, anything else you want to add, Bobby? No, I'm carrying these tools. Oh, yeah. I you I was gonna, talk about yes, tools. yes. I already forgot. Um, so the other thing is, so weed control is something that depends on your season and what your weed is. So that's been something I, I guess I'll just bring up as we encounter them. One of my favorite tools is called a scuffle hoe. This one here, or a stirrup hoe. It's great at this stage, before I even see any weeds, I just lightly come across, I let the, the tool do the work. Oh, here's like a little, that was perfect, there was a little weed there. Okay, so really simple way to prevent yourself from having to do a lot of hand weeding. And a lot of times it's like when they're these, the weeds are at that thread-like stage, really, really tiny. That's the best time to get them. Really easy to control at that point, before you even really see them. So it's just a kind of a preventative type of thing. Then there's a, t a weed called purslane that when I do this to it, it, it's so succulent that it still will root itself. So that one I kind of have to take out by hand. I'm going to show you purslane over here. All right, there's a beautiful purslane. <laughs> this row is getting a little purslaney. It's a sign of a good, healthy, fertile soil for sure. I use my soil knife, super simple, and uh, pull it out like this. The thing about purslane is Weeds are just plants that you don't want where they're planted. That doesn't mean they're a bad plant necessarily. This is actually an amazing edible. It's one of the only plants I know that has omega-3s in it. Um, it's, it's quite delicious, but it doesn't belong here in this bed. It will it'll start really taking over. Cameraman's gonna have a little bite of it. Um, a lot so, of our weeds are more nutritious for us than our actual cultivated true. garden plants. Yeah. So good about knowing your weeds. So right now, purslane is our main weed. This is buckwheat that I've seeded in the in the beds that we haven't um, planted. That's just great for my bees and a, a nice crop cover crop here. But then there's purslane in between. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to pull these out of the garden. Quite a few. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs>